Coming up on this week in Torrance, thousands of fans line up to meet a popular singer and actress right here in Torrance. We'll tell you who. Then hundreds of volunteers came out to take steps to combat homelessness. And the community unites to help raise funds for a Torrance boy recovering from a car accident. Plus, a new exhibit at the Madrona Marsh Nature Preserve. We'll tell you all about it. These stories and much more are just seconds away. Your local news starts right now. Hello and welcome to This Week in Torrance. I'm Jin Chun. And I'm Ben McCain. Thanks so much for joining us. Here are your top stories. The community rallied together to raise funds for a Torrance boy who's recovering from a car crash. Torrance Police Association hosted a fundraiser along with the Torrance Fire Department at the Elephant Bar recently. Seven-year-old Cole Zello is the grandson of Torrance Police Department dispatcher Denise Swartz. In December, Zello was in a car accident that left him in a coma for several days. Now he remains in an Orange County rehabilitation facility as he is on the road to recovery. His parents and other family members were in attendance and said they were touched by the large turnout. I couldn't be more moved by this community. Um, I, I feel like all of Torrance, all of the South Bay has come together for us. And it's, it's, it's difficult and this amount of support makes it a lot easier. Uh, so the officers tonight are playing servers. They're acting as servers. They're helping run food. Um, they're working side by side um, with our servers to take orders, to deliver drinks to the table. Um, so they're pretty much just an extra hand in being a server this evening. We also have an officer that's uh, bartending in the bar, so he's playing the role of a bartender. City officials, along with new police chief Eve Irvine, all turned out to show support. Cole's father, Nick Zello, says that Cole is now laughing, telling jokes, and remembers his family. If you would like to donate, you can go to youcaring.com and search Nick Zello. One annual count that dictates how much federal funding your community receives to combat homelessness was a huge success. Reporter Louis Tran was there and tells us more. Dominika Megardichian is helping to coordinate more than 130 volunteers expected tonight as they begin to explore the streets of Torrance and what's called the homeless count. How can we all come together, pull our resources rather than recreating the wheel? Megar Dichian works for the city of Torrance as a management associate. And tonight, as the city's liaison to a countywide effort to count the number of people living out in the streets in one of the largest populated counties in the country. We've had an incredible turnout. We have over 100 people that signed up. The Los Angeles Homeless Services Authority, or LASA, teamed up with the Family Promise of South Bay and the city of Torrance for this year's deployment count. What's really great about the South Bay in particular is everybody is so engaged. They will cover approximately 20 square miles over the span of a few short hours. This three-day project, which covers all of Los Angeles County, started in 2005 and has helped increase the number of shelters and programs to help end homelessness in the community. My wife and I have done this for every year that we've done this and uh, it's really important to make sure they know how to count people. We're here at the Ken Miller Recreational Center where volunteers gather around the community for the homeless count. Now the count occurs during the evening to help reduce a double counting. This is because homeless individuals begin to settle in at this time. Returning volunteers made up a good portion of those dedicated to somehow making an impact on their community. Well, last year I had an opportunity to actually participate and it was such a wonderful event. And for those new to the event, they brought hope to this project by giving a piece of themselves back to the community that they love. If I can help out, you know, one, one family, one kid, helping them one at a time, that, that, you know, that's what it's all about. Since 2015, the total number of those experiencing homelessness has increased from 3,006 to 4,282 within the South Bay communities. Organizers say it takes a collaborative effort in order to make change happen. We're all human. We're all here to try to play a role in it, volunteer and participate our time. For Torrance City Cable, I'm Louis Tran. Thanks, Louis. This year, nearly 9,000 volunteers participated across Los Angeles County.
Local, state, and federal elected officials share their priorities for the year and, more importantly, how they may affect you. Here in Torrance, the community gathered around to hear this year's top priorities in the city. At the fourth annual South Bay Legislative Meet and Greet, the South Bay Association of Chambers of Commerce partnered up with the South Bay Cities Council of Governments and Los Angeles County Division, League of California Cities, for this year's discussion at the Nakano Theater. Elected officials shared many of their priorities and concerns around the South Bay communities. Topics range from public transportation, public safety, and affordable housing. People really need a roof over their head. There's no way that you're going to get your life back together if you don't have a roof over your head. So the big challenge is working with South Bay cities to see uh, who will step up and, and show some leadership in building uh, more homes that people can afford. The forum helps connect the community to their local elected officials to voice any of their concerns and more importantly, for the officials to engage with their community. I like to do it at the beginning of the year. Uh, it really starts the year off right. We hear what the elected officials want to accomplish for the year. The elected officials get to hear from their, their city constituents uh, and chamber members. So it's important to, to know what they want to work on for the year and also where our priorities are as cities as well. You have to be engaged. You have to let your voice be, be heard. Um, Dr. Martin Luther King uh, stated often, uh, we will remember not the words of our enemies, but the silence of our friends. Too many of our friends and good people are remaining silent right now, and we need to get them involved. Congresswoman Maxine Waters and Assemblyman Almert Suchi were also in attendance. You will now be able to walk through history at the Madrona Marsh Preserve Nature Center without a tour guide. Thanks to a $700,000 grant by the California State Parks, five unique exhibits will be installed. The purpose of the grant is to provide educational opportunities so people can learn about the Madrona Marsh Preserve without added staff. The grant is called Looking Into Nature, Providing a History Lesson. One exhibit is a timeline mural that dates back 120,000 years. There will also be an atrium exhibit, symphony of sounds, and a tonga exhibit. The idea to apply for the grant came after a teacher and student were curious about the paleontological background of the marsh's land. They will have a grand opening of the exhibits in May. For more information, you can contact Tracy Drake at the Park Services office. Well, still ahead, we'll introduce you to the newest honorees of the Schweitzer Learning Center South Bay Women of the Year Award. Plus, thousands came out to meet a popular singer and songwriter and actress at the Delamo Fashion Center. We'll tell you who right after this. Palm trees, coastline, craft brews. Yep, this is Southern California. But this is Torrance. Have you ever driven to a whole other city just for a bowl of ramen? Because if you haven't, that's about to change. Have you ever been to a beach that feels so much like your own private beach that you're like, where has this been all my life? Welcome, my friends, to Torrance Beach. So private, you hadn't even heard of it. Have you ever been to a mall that had literally 2.7 million square feet of shopping? Run, don't walk to Del Amo Fashion Center. And get this, Torrance is the actual epicenter of the South Bay's craft brew industry. I guess you could say the brews are just craftier here. We also have a farmer's market that's just as much about the people as it is about the food. And even our museum scene is the best at the South Bay. All this, just 15 minutes from LAX. You'll come for the city, stay for the experience, and leave as a friend. So, are you in? Bocce enthusiasts in Torrance went head to head, but it was all in celebration. You'll find brand new green bitches at Columbia Park, now near the bocce courts. Nearly 60 people came out to celebrate the unveiling of the donated benches and a sign by the Kiwanis Club of Torrance. Kiwanis, for a long time, supported the relationship with the Torrance special athletes, and when the South Bay Bocce Club needed additional seating for spectators, they stepped up to make it happen. Now with this, we have seats for 24 people. That's a lot of people. And uh, we're very, very happy about that. The bocce courts uh, not only improve the opportunities for our citizens to have recreational play, but the benches then further enhance the quality of, of play for the bocce uh, players themselves. So without having them, there was a lot of people that watch bocce. They're not understanding it, but they want to be able to enjoy it and play themselves. They have to stand up, and it gets tiring after time. So having the benches now, people will be able to enjoy the game, after the unveiling, the Kiwanis Club and the Torrance Special Athletes competed on the courts. 
In attendance were the Torrance Special Athletes Bocce Team, South Bay Bocce Club, Mayor Patrick Fury and Councilman Milton Herring. The bocce courts officially opened in the city in 2016. The courts are located near the east parking lot off Prairie Avenue. It gives people an opportunity to sit here and watch it and get interested in the game. And that's the most important thing. More people interested in the game, more people will be facilitating the use of the bocce court. So uh, it was really super nice of one of our great service clubs coming forward and making a fantastic donation to, to make this a much better bocce court. The Torrance Special Athletes practice at Columbia Bocce Courts every Friday evening. Four women from the South Bay are being honored for their dedication to making a difference in the community. Torrance City Cable reporter Hibba Summit introduces us to this year's South Bay Women of the Year. For many of the honorees this year, the Schweitzer Learning Center is a familiar place. It's very close to my heart. I'm so supportive of what Schweitzer does because my daughter, um, from the age of six to about 12, came to the Schweitzer Center. Honoree Leanne King is one of four recipients of this year's Schweitzer Women of the Year Award, a distinction that's been a highlight at the school for nearly two decades. King says the Schweitzer Center helped her daughter become the woman she is today. In order to challenge her learning disabilities and her, the fact that she was nonverbal, and now she's a, a woman who runs her own business, who competes internationally in uh, Grand Prix jumping. King has been on the forefront of bringing people together and one of her passions has been inclusiveness. I was living in Palos Verdes at the time and the issue that rose to the fore was the changing demographics of the peninsula and the number of people coming from other parts of the world and how to deal with the issues that arose from that. She joined the Multicultural Committee of the Community Association of the Peninsula and chaired it for eight years. She also led the Los Angeles Women's Coalition, expanding women's rights. And one of her passion projects is continuing Martin Luther King Jr. Visions of Unity Arts Contest for high school students in Torrance. We felt that if we had a program that involved all the youth, the high school youth, and being able to talk about inclusiveness, their issues that they found in their lives, or their greater vision for what a world would look like at its best. And now we are in our 18th year and have more submissions than ever this year. So I think it really speaks to a need in the community. King has also served on the board of directors of the Volunteer Center South Bay Harbor Long Beach for the past 20 years. Dr. Rebecca Fu, executive director at the Schweitzer Learning Center, says a common thread of passion for volunteerism was a reason the honorees were chosen. People who really go above and beyond, people who have a passion to make a difference. Jill Smithsick Maroney, another honoree this year, says the recognition holds a special meaning for her. My mother received um, the Schweitzer Woman of the Year Award about 15 years ago. And making a difference in the South Bay has always been a large part of her life purpose. Well, I kind of grew up volunteering since my mom was so involved in it. And um, so I've helped her. She was on the Schweitzer board. Like the other honorees, Maroney also has a strong connection to the center. I've uh, got children myself. And so I, you know, always enjoyed working with children. And um, I have a niece who um, is special needs and she was a student at Schweitzer. Maroney has volunteered with the Parent Teacher Association, Torrance Sister City Association and the Torrance Historical Society. It's really a recognition for um, you know all the years that I've done things for the community and um, you know you give your time freely not expecting any reward except what you get out of it but it's nice to be recognized. Longtime Torrance business owner Lori Brandt says being surrounded by others who give back has inspired her to do the same. It's never a give to get kind of thing. It was always a thing we can, so why wouldn't we to give back to the community and do different organizations. And we've worked with, you know, the arts. We've done 
you know, different um, charities within um, Southern California and especially in Torrance. Celebrating 18 years of business in Torrance this year, Brian and her husband Bob, who own the Red Car Brewery in downtown Torrance, have supported many nonprofit organizations with donations. Brandt is also the current chairwoman of the Torrance Area Chamber of Commerce. It's a great opportunity to show leadership and, and talk to different businesses in our community. Brandt is also looking forward to learning more about the Schweitzer Learning Center, the nonprofit special education school that offers a wide range of therapeutic services, autism programs, and enrichment classes to students who have moderate to severe learning disabilities, emotional issues, and behavioral disorders. I'm excited to learn more about Schweitzer. I know a little bit about it. I, I have a niece who was diagnosed with autism, um, so it's very near and dear to my heart. We were looking for a way to celebrate and honor women who make a difference, and because Dr. Schweitzer had made a significant difference by starting Schweitzer Learning Center. Uh, and she was one of those strong, quiet women who didn't get a lot of accolades, and we realized that there's a whole lot of people in our community who have the same uh, situation where they make a tremendous difference, but they aren't really praised as much as perhaps they deserve. Los Angeles Board of Supervisor Janice Hahn is also a recipient this year. Hahn has been on the forefront to end homelessness and a new voice on the Metro Board of Directors. And like others nominated, Hahn also inherited her passion for public service. We've got a wide selection of interests and, and people that really have made a significant difference in improving their little corner of the world. And by bringing these women together, they hope to continue to shed light on a school that's making an impact on students who need it the most. Thanks, Heba. All four women will be recognized at a luncheon on February 8th at the Doubletree by Hilton in Torrance. A Grammy-nominated and multi-platinum singer and actress made an appearance at the Delamo Fashion Center recently. Demi Lovato celebrated her third capsule collection launch with Fabletics. There was a line out the door as more than 1,000 fans came out to meet her. The first fan was in line since 4 a.m. The Demi Lovato for Fabletics Winter Collection features exclusive new outfits and the debut of her first-ever lifestyle accessories, including footwear and bags. Her new collection is inspired by her active lifestyle and time on the road. I decided to partner with Fabletics because I love the brand and I love everything about it. The, the clothes are very comfortable, very cute, chic, um, fun, but also the brand is very empowering. I don't have a favorite outfit. I think that, you know, um, it's, like, it's like choosing one of my favorite songs. You know, you're proud of all of them. Lovato says there's a lot of rose gold details to the line. You'll also find futuristic elements, bold strapping details, metallic accents, and much more on her collection. You can find a range of sizes. It's available for purchase across eight countries and online. Fabletics is a global active lifestyle brand designed for every woman and was co-founded by Kate Hudson in 2013. Fabletics is located next to the Disney Store by Lucille's. The powerful tunes by the Beatles took attendees back in time at the James Armstrong Theater recently. VJ Records signed them, and uh, this is the first record that I ever played on the air of the Beatles. One, two, three. The Ticket to Ride music band that is considered the ultimate Beatles tribute band played famous songs making the evening magical. Backstage with the Beatles is not your typical tribute show. The 90-minute event is hosted by Bob Eubanks, the only living person to have produced the Beatles concerts all three years they toured America. Eubanks shared photos and behind-the-scenes stories from his experiences with the Beatles. He told stories that went along with the music. It's a one-of-a-kind show. It's uh, about 80% of the stories I tell happened to me uh, during the three years that I produced their concerts here in Southern California. Uh, it's fun. I use a wonderful, wonderful Beatle band called Ticket to Ride on stage with me, and I tell stories that lead up to music, and that's how it all came about. As musicians, we understand, we know what this music means to people. Beatles music for a lot of people is the, it's the holy grail of rock and roll, and it means, it means more than just music that you grew up with. It's, there's almost a, a, a religious affection. We're really excited about all the things of shows and arts education and entertainment experiences we're able to bring to the South Bay. Uh, tonight is just an example of some of the great stuff we're able to bring and 
We hope that more people come out to the theater. Live entertainment is is uh, definitely a great way to experience um, entertainment, and we just encourage people to step away from the screen and come on out to the theater. For more information on the show, go to backstagewiththebeatles.com. A multinational company known for its innovative GPS technology is bringing its experts to Torrance. Garmin recently announced expanded pilot training opportunities. There will be instructor-led training classes available for the GTN 650-750 touchscreen navigator series, the G500, G600 glass flight display systems, and all Garmin integrated flight decks. The new training provides pilots with varying levels of experience and a hands-on approach to learning Garmin avionics in a classroom environment. In November, they will be coming to Robinson Helicopter Company in Torrance. You can register online by selecting the training tab at flygarmin.com. Now you can show off your dance moves while learning Spanish with your child. Baila Baila Spanish for Kids officially opened in the city of Torrance. They're located on Crenshaw Boulevard. Parents and their children came out for the grand opening recently. The studio brand uses music and other techniques to get children interested in learning Spanish. Created in 2010 by Isabel Brazen, all of the teachers at the studios are native Spanish speakers and promote learning through playing games, making fun art projects, dancing, and singing along to the rhythm. They cater to children of all ages, including a preschool class. It was very, very important to actually bring the center here, like we have it in Santa Monica. Based on the demand, there's a lot, a lot of families in the area that keep asking us, we want Baila Baila here. So there is a very good amount of people who are interested in learning Spanish with creative techniques. So we needed to come to Torrance. I love Baila Baila. My kids love Baila Baila. We're always, you know, dancing their songs and listening to their songs and um, it's, it's, it's what we do at home. In the program they use association, repetition with creative techniques and tools to illustrate key concepts. They have story time, play time, various mommy and me classes and even yoga for kids. Brazen says the studio also gives parents an opportunity to meet others. They have their own YouTube channel where you can find some of the work of their talented teachers. For deals and packages, go to bailabailaonline.com. Getting an important health screening just got more affordable thanks to the Torrance South Bay YMCA. The WISE Diabetes Prevention Program teamed up with Assessa Labs and Torrance Memorial Medical Center to offer discounted hemoglobin A1C screenings at various local labs. This screening can help determine whether you're pre-diabetic. You can now schedule an A1C screening today at a number of locations and receive a discounted rate of $23. The original cost is $54. The test measures the average blood glucose over the past 120 days so then you can see how well your blood sugar has been controlled over the past few months. You can go to assessalabs.com to receive the discount. The code is YMCALADPP. For more information, you can contact Jameson Costa at the Torrance South Bay YMCA. Well, the Torrance Memorial Medical Center is celebrating newborns in a big way. They created this selfie wall that welcomes little ones with a photo opportunity, but it gets better. The hospital also installed a chime each time a baby is born at the hospital. The Maternal Child Health Services Clinical Director says the chime encourages staff, patients, and visitors to pause and take a moment to acknowledge and celebrate new life. A big-name car company is warning drivers about various models that could impact safety. Toyota recalled more than half a million cars worldwide to fix an electrical problem that could stop airbags from inflating in a crash. The recall includes Toyota Prius, Lexus RX, and NX SUVs, to name a few. The cars were all produced from May 2015 to March 2016. The company says an open electrical circuit could occur over time and could stop the side and front airbags from deploying. 
Dealers will inspect serial numbers on sensors and replace them if necessary at no cost to owners. If you're affected, you will receive a letter in late March. Still ahead, upcoming events happening right here in the city. Plus a preview of what to expect on the next episode of The Sports Desk. You're watching This Week in Torrance. Guess what? I have some news for you. There's free food right there, junk food. Do you see that truck? Oh, jeez. It's a two Michelin star chef. All for free, ladies and gentlemen. All for free. Here we have a panzanella with summer vegetables and pesto. Enjoy. How we doing? So what do you got going on underneath that plate there? This food is really about to be thrown away. Yeah. Bro? Is there, is there something wrong with this food? Where did you get it from? From farmer's markets. They put aside the ugly vegetables and the ugly fruits. Carrot top, soft avocados. It was all food that was going to be discarded. Even the drink you had is made from like a little bruised peach. Did it taste a little bruised? Great. It was good. The average person throws away 24 pounds of food a month. That's a lot. Isn't that a lot? Go visit savethefood.com for more information. Thank you. Junk food time! Welcome back, everybody. Here's some upcoming events on February 8th from 4 to 6 p.m. The Torrance Art Museum will host stories in art, a free after-school program for children ages 6 to 11 with their parent or guardian. It incorporates storytelling, a tour of the exhibition, and an art-making workshop. Registration is required. And on Thursday, February 15th, you can celebrate Lunar New Year with a fun story and a craft time at Walterior Library. It starts at 4 p.m. and is free. No registration is required. Then the City of Torrance Public Works Department is hosting a filter exchange event for its residents on February 17th at AutoZone on Hawthorne Boulevard. From 9 a.m. to 1 p.m., residents will be able to turn in their used oil car filters and receive a new free filter in return. Residents may receive up to two new filters in exchange for two used filters while supplies last. Now, let's find out what's happening in the Torrance sports world. What's going on, AJ? Hey, guys, here's what you'll see on this week's edition of the Sports Desk. In boys basketball, West High School's Alex Mishaw joins an exclusive club, while the Bishop Montgomery hoop team remains perfect. The Torrance girls soccer team extended an olive branch to their opponents recently, and we'll hit the beach with the Northwest combo team. Plus, we'll debut our Sports Desk feature profile entitled Born to Play the David Singleton Story. You won't want to miss that. All this and so much more. Remember to watch the Sports Desk at 4 and 9.30 p.m. right here on Torrance City Cable. Jen and Ben, back to you. Thanks so much, AJ. Well, that does it for us on This Week in Torrance. I'm Ben McCain. And I'm Jen Chun. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you next time.